Hello, good afternoon. So we're here at the offices of Leicester Aldridge. My name is Giuseppe Pingerna and I'm a senior associate at Leicester Aldridge and we are here to discuss Good Divorce Week. I am in the presence of our brilliant family lawyer, Emma Ritchie. Hello. And our fantastic trainee solicitor, Luke Foote. Hello. So they are a vital part of our family team, but we're also talking about what is vital in terms of Good Divorce Week this week. And what Good Divorce Week is, is effectively a campaign run by Resolution. Resolution is a fantastic organisation, as we know, guys, um, which effectively try and deals with the cases we have every day as family lawyers in a more collaborative manner. Now, in terms of Good Divorce Week, they try to do this campaign year in, year out um, to, to effectively try and show how we can make separation, divorce, dealing with the finances, and most importantly, the children, better all round. So it's a really important campaign, um, and that's what we're trying to discuss today. Hello, so another, another real huge issue again in this Good Divorce Week is ways to avoid court, because I think you guys, we agree, we've already discussed what crisis we're in in terms of family law, in terms of um, the, the system, the system's creaking. Um, sadly, we can't just rely on court for various reasons we've already discussed and touched upon during this week. But Luke, you've got a great quote regarding this, haven't you? Yeah, so from the Law Society president um, recently said that the government must ensure so far as possible that there are sufficient fee-paid and full-time judges to deal with existing and new caseloads. Um, and also sort of like a recent statistic shows that there's 111,000 um, open family law cases, with near enough like two thirds of them being open private law cases. Great. I think uh, that's a really interesting quote, Luke, in terms of uh, Good Divorce Week's focus this week on the overstretched family courts and trying to keep matters outside of court. Mm. Giuseppe, as family lawyers, do you think we do enough to help clients avoid court? And can you talk us through some of the alternative options available to clients? Yeah, no, it's a good question and great quote, Luke. I was, so I often have this conversation with my clients, um, particularly when it comes to, it's not, as I say, you know, we, if we separate the main areas we do, um, if we say divorce, in one column, financial aspects of the marriage in the other, children in the other, and you know, we have either a mixture of those, um, we have all issues sometimes, but ultimately when children are involved, I will always say to my client, look, no matter how bad matters are now, it's not just about who has the children or the child, this weekend, the school holidays, we've got to look for, or you know, who alternates, who, we've got to put the children first, That that's, number one and we've got to think of that scenario and you know that graduation ceremony in 15 years time or you know that top table at a wedding and it, it sounds you know it's, it's it's serious stuff because ultimately the you you have these children you are going to be part of each other's lives when we're into their adulthood they don't want you squabbling and what court can do you know once you've gone through that whole process it's horrible um, it's very difficult to forget um, and people will remember that year where we had two court hearings and it's just, it, it takes a long time to repair. Um, to answer your question, Emma, I mean, I, so I will always say to them, and I'll zip through these, I will, I will always recommend, um, and this is through resolution actually and how we're, how we're trained effectively is, you know, that, that, that uh, kitchen table scenario, Clearly, if there's domestic domestic abuse, that can't. That's not even in the equation. But ultimately, try and sit down if you can. Try and talk thing, things through because that's always the best way. Secondly, mediation. As we know, mediation is without prejudice. Um, if matters are agreed on a, what's known as a memorandum of understanding, then you have an agreement in place. Yes, we know that it's all without prejudice, as mentioned. 
but I will come to a way that we can try and implement that later. Um, but mediation, you know, a mediator is independent, um, you know, and that goes a long way. And many parties start off by saying, we can't get, you know, I can't even get in a room with him or her. But then soon, you know, there's shuttle media, there's various options for mediation, but that, that's a great option. The third one, and arbitration I wanted to touch on. Have you, you've looked into arbitration in the past, haven't you? Yes, yeah, so I think arbitration is an a area that we're seeing uh, up and coming and a lot of clients are considering it with their cases because rather than waiting months and months for the court to list your next hearing, with arbitration you can select your own hearing date. Yes, yes, no, and I, and I think that goes a long way considering as we keep mentioning how that court system's Greek in Luke's quote, um, you know, what we're hearing from the, the president. And I think the great thing about arbitration as well, you both parties sign an agreement and are bound by what's agreed in, in arbitration itself. So they are bound by that. So it makes it, you know, there's kudos to, to that, like a court order. Um, the other one is, and we're hearing more and more about this, is private FDRs in, in the financial aspects of, of the marriage. So with that, you can often, rather than wait for a court date, the great thing about arbitration and private FDRs, I, I think, you know, th this is worth its weight in gold, is you're not relying on a court to list it. You, if both parties are in agreement, they can choose their own judge. That judge could be a, a retired solicitor, a retired barrister, or even a, a sitting judge, in fact, that, but you choose, you can have rather than wait months and months and months, it could happen at the Leicester Aldridge offices, um, it could happen at the barristers' chambers. We don't have to rely on the court's timetable, which is great. Um, another one we, I suppose, we, we need to discuss is collaborative law or roundtable meetings as well. Um, more away from the kind of an agreement, but what, what, that can happen with those is I've, I've been involved in probably five or six really successful ones where you know it'll be my client and I and my counterpart and his client or her client and we thrashed it out and if you can reach an agreement record it on the heads of agreement thereafter us as lawyers between us can draft a, a consent order um, you know that that's that's something that you know because ultimately you're negotiating in court anyway why can't we do that at one of the solicitor's offices and so collaborative law we're encouraged with that from resolution certainly um and all, also there's the the last last jigsaw piece should be court okay that's the last resort and i'm always pleased if you know a client can say look you fought two for nail for me and avoided court then that that's that's makes me happy.